Yeah, yes, yes, he is. It's really exciting. He's um, he's ready to play footy. He played a lot of senior footy last year. We know that, and um, you know, as a club, we've been waiting for him probably um, for the moment. He had a little hamstring, so we're putting back a little bit. But you know, he's um, he's aggressive and ready to play. He's just he's one of them mature young people who are just right to go out and play men's footy. I was going to say he's one of the rare draftees that's got a man's body as an 18-year-old, isn't he? He's just ready. Mate. Yeah, he's a big boy. Yeah, he's a big boy. He's aggressive with it. He, he, you know, he's, he's explosive. He's, he's got a lot of things that you'd suggest will make him successful at AFL football. Now he gets his first test to actually see how he goes against what a game for to debut in against the, the reigning premiers. So, Ken, how does that allow you to shuffle the magnets? Because you bring in a guy that we know is a half-back. So how many other magnets do you shuffle on board through that selection? One, one or two. Yeah, definitely one or two. I mean, for us, the, the change that we'll make tomorrow will be Laddams will come out for Jones. So then we'll mix and match a little bit with as you rightly point out, Roots, with um, what we need to do to get the balance in the team right, and we'll be able to do that. Do you expect Pierce to play more midfield minutes? Right? No, no, but I like the fact that you think he can play midfield minutes, but yes, he could play some midfield minutes. Um, you know, Hartler can play in there as well. We've got Burton who can play those sort of roles as well. We've, we're pretty lucky with our flexibility and our half-backs, and you know, they can all play a slightly different role. And we spent a lot of time over the summer making sure players could cover different roles. How much is that about what happened at West Coast? Or how much is going to happen against Richmond? Um, oh, there's always a little bit of both. I reckon a little bit of um, you know our growth as a footy team and where we're going. Lockie is part of the clearly part of the, the growth and what we want, and you know to to explore what his talent looks like at AFL level. We think he'll make us better, um, and we know that initially he's going to learn his game a little bit. But so yeah, we need to explore a little bit more of that to get the balance and the growth of our football team from a bit of West Coast and a little bit of what our we look in the future. What would it be like if he and Dustin Martin were in the same squad? It'd be a collision. It'd be a collision, Dusty and um, and Locke. I mean, Locke would be um, Locke would be okay, but look, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm tipping he's probably hoping he doesn't get to spend too much time near Dusty because he's he's been a great of the game. He's a remarkable player. How did the players respond to last week's effort? I mean, you obviously did your coaching review, but how did the players respond to the Yeah, they were really disappointed. I mean, they were they're a really proud group, and they've been they've been a really strong group for a long period of time now, and they, they you know. To lose for them in a home and away has been a been a while. You know, it's been quite a while for them, and you know they didn't like the loss. They, Tommy, led by Tommy, I think Tommy would be fair to say Tom was um, not happy with the performance of, of his team, and, and that's why they'll be okay as they'll you know they'll recover and bounce back from there. But we, we have to understand the competition. It's bloody good competition. No, we, we get challenged by the result because we don't want to lose. And that's the simple, we can't afford to write it off. We have to learn, you know. Lose and learn is something that we have to deal with. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll learn from that. The game changes, it helps us reflect on the game changes too. And I think that's what we did as much as anything. Is, you know, we've had some different style of football. We faced a different team last week. We played it in a different way than some of the teams that we played early in the year. So we, we learn a little bit. What the players say about how poor they were in handling the ball? And uh, it upside. Uh, we, we did talk... A, we talked um, at times around respecting the ball and, and that's that sometimes it's care with the ball and sometimes it's you know just taking that extra second or extra moment to make sure it gets to your opponent so we, we spend time talking about that and reflect on that and we did that last week and they know that they know every time when they mess the ball up they again they don't want that to happen but it happens so everything's staying as it is do you maintain your guards and marshal together in attack you convinced that that can still work yeah, well, we think three tall certainly works. I mean, we had four there last week, so we think three certainly, and that's the way we would look. Unless we get injuries, we'd, we'd like to look like that more often than not. And um, you know, we think that they can certainly operate together. And again, whether that's whether that's Pete, Charlie, you know, Todd or Mitch together, we think a mixture of the three or four is, is okay for us. You spent a lot of time up at Calgary Farm with me again and again at that tape. What didn't happen in the last half? How much of that's still relevant? Yeah, not too much. I, um, you know, we, everyone would like to go back and say, um, you know, this is going to be a big moment because of the prelim final. It'll be a big moment because both teams had a loss last week, and both teams are trying to create their season this year. And that's that's nothing about last year. We we learn, like we, I said before about the West Coast game, we learn more from the West Coast game than we'll be able to put into this week than we will from last year's prelim. I mean, it was pretty challenging conditions, as everyone knows. On prelim final night, it was a 46 to 40 game. It was miserable weather, and tomorrow night's going to be a complete opposite, I think. And That'll make it a you know, better football spectacle, I'm sure, and some of the stuff you may have learned from a prelim final. What I'd learned mostly is Dustin's a good player, Richmond are a great team, and they went on and won a premiership. So is this the real test about your want to score more from all those opportunities that you create? 
oh, we've been that regardless of this week. We've been, we've been that all pre-season and all summer that we want to create more opportunities. But I think the game, I'd say it again, the game has changed a bit and some of the opportunities you're now getting are in different positions on the ground and sides are obviously are penetrate from a lot further back than they have in the past. Can you tell you not ever? No, Todd's not out there. Todd rolled his ankle a little bit yesterday, so he'll be a, he'll be a test before he plays tomorrow night. We expect he'll be okay, but he did roll his ankle, and uh, if he doesn't come up, Laddams would come in. Um, and obviously Sam back. He uh, came up, I think, a few days ago. How's his condition? He looked good physically. Sorry. Semi cut back. Oh yes, sorry. I'm thinking about the team. I'm thinking about Sam. I've got something wrong there. Yeah, no, he's, he looks he looks fine. He's in he's in a really good space. He's he's happy and healthy, and that's that's the key part about that was for Sam to come back happy and healthy, and um, you know then progress into playing football in the next couple of weeks. And Sam May is out there today. Is he comfortable? Yeah, he's one of the emergencies. He's one of the emergencies again. He'll be in that mix of players who we talk about for the sub role tomorrow night. And again, because it's a, the lateness of the sub role and the flexibility it gives you, I won't lock into who that was going to be today. We'll worry about that tomorrow. What's How He'll be in that group of people who are sitting in the, the sub role. It's a game. We won't lock into what that looks like, but we will reflect on that as we get close to the game. We'll make sure we've got everything we need in place, and then we'll make that correct decision. And if he wasn't to play tomorrow night, he'd play the following day. Have you found that balance? Like, have you, you're not going to have a sub, the same sub for 20 weeks in a row to lose the position. Where do you think that, that balance lies with, with having the same sub? For yeah, I think that's, that's, that's the really good question that we're, all, all coaches are trying to balance out and figure out. And, I think they're different players and you know different moments. You know, it's a player like Rockliffe who did it for a couple of weeks. A player like Bergman, who's a young player who needs to play football more consistently. You're going to be challenged with what that looks like. But the overriding ingredient to all that is we want team success tomorrow night, and we have to make sure we make the right call there. How much do we expect to see a leader in the ruck tomorrow night? Hopefully not too much. Uh, he hasn't played there yet for us, so we, we don't expect that to be the case. So. Um, um, we, we won't be going into the game thinking that Lee is going to play in the ruck, but if he does have to play in the ruck, we, will, we know we can do that. So who's going to take the, the Laddams minutes then? The, 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 the ruck role? Yes. Yeah, it's Charlie and um, Todd is, is who we would look to play in those spots normally. It doesn't mean Lee can't play in that. We know Richmond do it differently. They bring it from their back end. We could certainly do it from our back end if we want, but at the moment I think you can, you can be sure that we'll use our front end players to help us in the ruck. Is that a bit of a view going forward? Potential one by one, or does it change? No, I think form. I think Hazy form's the biggest factor. If, if Laddams is in really good form, he's a part of the team, and he's been a little bit off with his form. So he's, you know, he's, if, if you're not in form, as a, you know, for for that second ruckman, as, as a forward, as much as you are a ruckman, you, you, you're going to probably pay a price. And we've got a lot of quality forwards in our team. You know, we talked about George Yardis, we talked about Marshall and, and Dixon, but the Smalls in the side as well. We, we we look for balance in the team, and that's what we try to get. And but balance by best form, and best form is. Obviously, Pete's form's not where it needs to be, so that's why he loses his spot. I'm not sure if he's touched on it specifically, but does the specific matchups on him? No, um, what I've noticed over the last um, three premierships that Richmond have won is Dusty's hard to match up on, and <laughs> he's, uh, he does some incredible stuff. Uh, I mean, I, I, know I, I listened to Damien talk about him. He said Dustin pretty much does what Dustin likes to do, and so there's a challenge in that for the opposition. We're really aware of his quality, but we're all equally aware of the quality of the opposition as a collective. He gets a lot of opportunities because of his team, and um, we, we, we'll take our turn and we'll do what we can to, to limit his damage. He's a high-quality player, but you know we're confident we can control their team, and he's a part of it. Happy. Can you get too bad like last year, pretty much along and you responded each time? Who, who led that in the group? Oh, I think the group do. I think the group are, you know, as I said, they're really well led with the, the leadership boys, and they. They, they expect better of each other and they expect better of themselves. And they want to be great teammates to each other. And normally in any any team that's got some quality about it, you can respond normally week after week. But, um, you know, we've got two teams tomorrow who are both trying to respond. So there's a, you know, who, who wins the response ticket that everyone wants to put on the table. It's just part of the season for us and we just need to play a good game tomorrow night. How close is McKenzie to being the one that came in this week? Yeah, he's been in pre pretty good form. Uh, so, so Trent's right on the cusp of our team, but the team have been pretty successful for all bar last week. They've been playing pretty good footy, so he's, he's, he's right on the cusp. Can you get Chris Scott put on the table again how much challenging, challenging it is for coaches? I lost a decade on. Are you enjoying it more or less? I love my job. And the pressure's on coaches? No, the pressure's tough. The pressure's hard and the pressure's real, but um, I love what I do. And, you know, if the pressure becomes too much, that's, that's what happens, I think. But for me, my passion for this job is as high as it's ever been. Um, but I understand the stress that Chris talks about. I, 
we all get it. We all we understand how, how hard the, the job is, but do I want to do another job? No, I don't. I love what I do. No, I think we should expect something pretty similar to Richmond. I think that's, you know, I, I think they use language, it's, it's a Richmond type of football and um, they've been so successful. That I, they're not going to change too much, I don't think. You know, personnel sometimes changes what you do, but I think more often than not you can expect a pretty consistent Richmond performance. The, the challenge for teams has been for four years is how do you beat that? All good? Thanks. Thanks, Kenny. Ta.